The Marin Fairfax One is a bike designed for fitness riding, commuting, and bike path cruising. It's affordable and practical. It's the least expensive in the Fairfax series, but that doesn't mean it lacks quality. It is built around a lightweight aluminum frame with a strong steel fork. These are key parts of the bike that make it feel light and solid when riding. It's a good choice for people who want something simple and reliable for daily use. I had the chance to ride it, and I'll share my experience in this review. Frame and Design The first thing I noticed about the Marin Fairfax One is its lightweight frame. It uses Series 1 aluminum, which is durable but keeps the bike light. This makes it easier to ride, especially if you're going up hills or riding long distances. The internal cable routing is a nice touch too. It keeps the cables out of the way, giving the bike a cleaner look. You don't have to worry about them getting snagged on anything. The frame also comes with mounts for a rack, fenders, and a kickstand. These little details make the bike versatile. You can add more parts to it, like baskets or a rack which could be handy if you're using it for commuting or running errands. The bike has the option to customize it for your needs. The steel fork is another important part of the design. It's not the lightest fork out there, but it provides stability. I felt that the bike handled well even on rough patches of road. The fork kept everything steady, and I didn't feel too many bumps. It gives you a little more confidence, especially if you're riding on streets with potholes or uneven surfaces. The geometry of the bike feels comfortable for longer rides. I didn't feel too stretched out or cramped. It sits somewhere in the middle, which is good for both fitness riding and commuting. You can ride it for a couple of hours without feeling sore. It's not too aggressive in terms of posture, which is great for people who don't want something that feels too much like a racing bike. It's more laid back, but still efficient enough to get you where you need to go quickly. Gearing and drivetrain. The Marin Fairfax One uses a 3x7, speed drive train from Shimano. This setup is pretty basic, but it works well for city riding and light hills. You get 21 gears to choose from, which is more than enough for most situations. The gear range is quite practical. You've got low gears for climbing and higher gears for speeding up on flat sections. The shifts were smooth, and I didn't have any problems with the gears sticking or slipping. Shimano is known for making reliable parts, and this bike uses a basic version of that technology. One thing I noticed is that the 3x7 setup doesn't offer as many gears as some higher-end bikes. However, for the average rider, it's more than enough. I rarely found myself wishing for more gear. On steeper hills, the low gears gave me enough help to get up without straining too much. On the other hand, the high gears allowed me to keep a good pace when I was riding on flat roads. I think it strikes a nice balance for everyday riders. The shifters are integrated with the brake levers which keeps things simple. You don't need to take your hands off the bars to shift. It's an easy system to get used to, even if you haven't ridden bikes with multiple gears before. I found the shifting to be smooth and predictable, which is all you can ask for from a setup like this. It's not the fastest or most advanced drivetrain, but it works well for what it is. Braking System The Marin Fairfax One comes with mechanical disc brakes from Clark's. These brakes aren't as fancy as hydraulic disc brakes, but they get the job done. They use mechanical cables, which means you have to apply a bit more force to the levers compared to hydraulic brakes. However, I found that the stopping power was decent for the type of riding I was doing. They performed well in both dry and wet conditions, which is a big advantage over traditional rim brakes. One of the benefits of disc brakes is that they are more consistent in all weather conditions. I rode the bike on a couple of rainy days, and the brakes didn't lose their effectiveness. This is important if you're using the bike for commuting and can't always avoid bad weather. Even though the brakes require a little more effort to operate compared to hydraulic systems, they still give you good control over the bike. I didn't have any issues with stopping, even when I needed to slow down quickly. The brake levers are integrated with the shifters, which simplifies the handlebar setup. It keeps everything neat, and you don't have to think too much about where your hands should be. You can shift and brake without moving your hands from the grips which is a convenient feature, especially in busy traffic situations. Wheels and Tires The wheels on the Marin Fairfax One are aluminum, with double wall rims. These are pretty standard for hybrid bikes, but they are strong enough to handle most riding conditions. The bike uses 700C wheels, which are common on road bikes and hybrids. These wheels help give the bike a smooth and fast ride on pavement. The double wall rims add a bit of extra strength, 
which is reassuring if you're riding on rougher surfaces or carrying extra weight, like a bag on a rear rack. The tires are 700 by 35 millimeters, which strikes a good balance between speed and comfort. They're not too skinny, so they offer a bit of cushioning over bumps, but they're also not too wide, so they don't slow you down. I found the tires to be ideal for city riding and bike paths. They have enough grip for cornering, but they still roll smoothly on paved surfaces. I didn't experience any issues with the tires, and they felt durable enough to last a long time with regular use. Final thoughts. The Marin Fairfax One is a solid entry-level hybrid bike. It's affordable, but it doesn't feel cheap. The frame is light and well-built, and the components are reliable for everyday use. The bike is versatile enough for fitness riding, commuting, and casual bike path cruising. It's not a high-performance bike, but it's practical and comfortable for the average rider. If you're looking for a reliable, affordable hybrid bike that can handle a variety of riding conditions, the Marin Fairfax One is a good choice. While it might not have all the bells and whistles of more expensive bikes, it does the job well for those who need something simple and effective. The first thing I noticed when I got on the Cirrus X 4.0 was how smooth the ride felt. The bike has what's called a future shock built into the front, which absorbs some of the bumps and potholes you usually hit on the road. I didn't feel as many vibrations from rough surfaces, and that made the whole experience a lot more comfortable. This is especially useful if you're riding on mixed surfaces, like going from pavement to gravel. I also like the riding position. It's not super aggressive, like a road bike, where you're hunched over the handlebars. The Cirrus X 4.0 has a more upright position, which made it easier on my back and shoulders. I found that I could ride for longer without feeling sore, which is a big plus if you're planning to use the bike for commuting or longer rides. Comfort and handling. One of the key things about this bike is how comfortable it is. Specialized added some extra features, like ergonomic grips and a saddle design to fit most riders. The grips are soft and shaped to fit your hands better, so you don't get that tingling sensation in your fingers that sometimes happens on longer rides. The saddle is also quite comfortable, although it might take a few rides to break it in. At first, it felt a little stiff, but after a few days, it started to mold to my shape. The wide tires are another feature I appreciated. They're 700 by 38 millimeters, which means they're wider than typical road bike tires. This adds more stability and grip, especially when riding on gravel or uneven surfaces. I found that I didn't have to worry as much about slipping or losing control, even when I took the bike off the pavement and onto dirt paths. The extra width also contributes to the overall comfort, as the tires absorb some of the bumps along the way. The bike handles well, even in tight corners or on winding paths. The steering felt responsive, and I didn't have to put too much effort into turning. This made the bike feel agile, which is great for city riding or navigating through traffic. Build quality and components. The frame of the Cirrus X 4.0 is made from aluminum, which keeps the bike lightweight but sturdy. It's not the lightest bike I've ever ridden, but it's lighter than other hybrids I've tried. Specialized also added a carbon fork to the front, which helps with both weight reduction and absorbing vibrations from the road. I could tell that the bike was well-built because everything felt solid, from the frame to the handlebars. One of the standout components on this bike is the SRAM NX drivetrain. It's a 1x11 setup, which means there's only one chainring in the front and 11 gears in the back. This makes shifting simpler because you don't have to worry about a front derailleur. I found the shifting to be smooth and precise. The wide range of gears, 11 to 42 teeth, gave me plenty of options for different terrains. Whether I was climbing a hill or cruising on flat roads, I could always find the right gear without too much trouble. The hydraulic disc brakes were another component I liked. They provide strong, reliable stopping power, even in wet conditions. I didn't have to pull hard on the brake levers to come to a quick stop, which made me feel more in control. In busy areas or when riding in traffic, Having good brakes is really important, and the ones on the Cirrus X 4.0 didn't disappoint. Versatility One of the things that make the Cirrus X 4.0 stand out is its versatility. This bike isn't just for road riding. It's designed to handle a mix of surfaces, from smooth pavement to gravel trails. I tested it out on both, and it performed well in both situations. On paved roads, it felt fast and smooth, but when I took it onto gravel, it still felt stable and comfortable. 
The wider tires and future shock really made a difference when the surface got rough. I also appreciated the bike's ability to carry extra gear. It has mounts for racks and fenders, which means you can easily turn this bike into a commuter or even use it for light touring. I didn't attach any racks or bags during my test rides, but I can see how it would be useful for someone who needs to carry things like groceries or work supplies. The Cirrus X 4.0 is a great option if you want a bike that can do a little bit of everything. It's not specialized for just one type of riding, which makes it a good all-around choice. Whether you're using it to get around town, explore local trails, or go on longer rides, this bike can handle it. Final thoughts. The Specialized Cirrus X 4.0 is a great bike for anyone who wants something that can handle a variety of surfaces. It's comfortable, thanks to features like the Future Shock and ergonomic grips, and it's versatile enough to be used for everything from commuting to gravel riding. The 1x11 drivetrain is easy to use, and the hydraulic disc brakes provide reliable stopping power. Whether you're riding on smooth pavement or tackling rougher trails, this bike can handle it. The Giant Escape 3 is a bike I've been using for some time now, and overall, I'd say it's a good choice if you're looking for something basic and reliable. I wouldn't call it flashy or high-tech, but it does what I need it to do without too much fuss. Whether I'm heading to work, running errands, or just taking a ride to clear my mind, this bike fits right into my daily routine. It's the kind of bike that doesn't demand a lot from you, but it gives back in terms of being practical and easy to ride. When I first got on the bike, I noticed how light it felt. The frame is made from aluminum, which makes it pretty lightweight, especially compared to steel bikes. This makes it easy to handle and helps when you need to go a little faster. It doesn't feel like you're dragging a heavy bike around. But even though it's light, it feels solid enough that I'm not worried about it breaking or being too fragile. I feel like I can take it on different surfaces, from smooth city streets to bumpier paths, without a problem. The ride itself is smooth, and I think that has a lot to do with the 700C wheels. These wheels are a good size for a mix of speed and stability. They roll well on most surfaces, and I haven't had issues with the tires feeling too thin or too fat. They're just the right balance which makes the bike feel steady. The tires are puncture resistant, which is a big plus. I don't have to worry about getting a flat every time I hit a rough patch on the road or some broken glass. One of the things that stood out to me early on was the positioning of the handlebars. You sit more upright on this bike compared to some others, which I find much more comfortable for everyday riding. It doesn't put as much strain on my back, neck, or shoulders, so I can ride for longer without feeling sore. I like this because I use the bike for commuting, and I'm on it for a decent amount of time during the day. It's not a racing bike, so I'm not leaning forward in an aggressive posture. Instead, it feels casual and relaxed, which is exactly what I want. One of the main reasons I went with the Giant Escape 3 is because it's versatile. It has 21 gears, and for me, that's more than enough. I use the bike to get around town, and sometimes that means dealing with hills. The 3x7 gearing system, Three chain rings in the front and seven in the back gives me plenty of options to find the right gear for the right situation. Shifting between gears is easy, and the Shimano shifters do their job well enough. It's not going to be the smoothest shifting you've ever felt if you're used to high end bikes, but for the price point and the kind of riding I do, it works just fine. The Shimano Torni derailers are also pretty basic. They get the job done, but they're not top of the line. I've had no major issues with them so far but I imagine they might wear out quicker if I were putting a lot of miles on the bike every week. For my purposes, though, they're fine. If you're someone who's planning to ride long distances or in harsher conditions, you might want to consider upgrading these parts eventually. The brakes on the Giant Escape 3 are linear pull brakes, sometimes called V-brakes. They're not disc brakes, which means they don't have the same stopping power, especially in wet conditions. But in dry weather, they work well enough. I feel in control when I need to stop, and they haven't let me down so far. I would have preferred disc brakes for a little more confidence when it's raining, but again, this bike is on the simpler side, so I wasn't expecting high-end brakes. For city riding and casual use, these brakes do the trick. The bike also has some practical features that make it a good fit for commuting. There are integrated rack mounts, which I haven't used yet, but I plan to. If I need to carry groceries or a backpack, I can easily add a rear rack and make the bike even more functional. 
This is a nice touch, because I don't have to figure out how to attach a rack without built-in mounts. It's ready for that kind of customization if I need it. I think the Giant Escape 3 is a great choice for someone who wants a reliable, no-nonsense bike. It's not the fanciest or the most advanced bike out there, but it does the job well. If you're looking for something versatile, comfortable, and affordable, this bike checks a lot of boxes. It's perfect for commuting, fitness rides, and casual outings. The design is simple, the components are functional, and the overall experience of riding the bike is smooth and easy. The Trek FX3 Disc is a bike that's all about versatility. It works well whether you're using it for commuting, fitness rides, or just cruising around the neighborhood. What struck me first was how light it felt. The frame is made of aluminum, which makes the bike feel responsive and easy to handle. The carbon fork does a good job absorbing vibrations, which I noticed when riding over some rough pavement. It helped smooth out the bumps, so I didn't feel every crack in the road. The 1X drivetrain setup is another feature I liked. Instead of dealing with a front derailleur, you only have one chainring in the front and a wide-range cassette in the back. For me, this made shifting simpler and less of a hassle. I never had to think too hard about which gear I should be in, and I still had plenty of options for different terrain. Whether I was climbing a hill or picking up speed on flat roads, the gears felt more than enough for the job. The hydraulic disc brakes also impressed me. They worked well in all types of weather. Comfort is definitely something this bike offers. The handlebars are designed to reduce vibrations, and the ergonomic grips felt comfortable even after riding for a couple of hours. The saddle, though, might be something to think about if you're planning long rides. It was fine for shorter trips and daily commutes, but for more intense or longer rides, some riders might prefer a different one. You can add fenders, a rack, bottle cages, and other accessories to make it suit your needs. The internal cable routing is a nice touch too. Not only does it keep the cables safe from the weather, but it also makes the bike look sleeker. If you're into tracking your fitness, you can add the Duo Trap S, which lets you connect the bike to a fitness app on your phone. That's a nice feature if you're someone who likes keeping track of their rides. I found the wide range of gears more than enough to handle both steep hills and flat stretches. The hydraulic disc brakes also performed reliably, providing solid stopping power in all weather conditions, which is great if you're riding in unpredictable environments. Overall, I'd say the Trek FX3 disc is a solid all-around bike. It's light and quick, but also comfortable enough for longer rides. The simple drivetrain, solid braking system, and ability to add accessories make it versatile for different kinds of riding. Whether you're commuting to work, riding for exercise, or just enjoying a weekend ride, this bike handles it all pretty well. If you're looking for something that can handle both fitness rides and casual cruises, this is a good option to consider. The Cannondale Quick CX-3 is a bike built for city rides and light off-road adventures. I've had the chance to use it for a while, and I think it works well if you like to ride around town but also explore some less traveled paths. It feels like a good balance between comfort and functionality, with a few key features that stand out. First off, the frame is made from Smartform C3 alloy, which makes it feel lightweight but still strong. I noticed that it's easy to handle, even in tight spaces or when weaving through traffic. The bike has a suspension fork with 63 millimeters of travel, which helps absorb bumps and cracks on the road. It's not meant for serious mountain biking, but it does the job well for city streets with potholes or casual rides on gravel paths. The suspension also has a lockout feature, which I found helpful when riding on smooth roads. It keeps the ride more efficient by not letting the fork move when you don't need it to. The bike's drivetrain is Shimano 8-speed, which is pretty basic but works fine for most city riding. The gears shifted smoothly, and I didn't have any issues with them when riding up small hills or picking up speed on flat roads. It uses hydraulic disc brakes, which are made by Tektro. I like these brakes because they give a strong and reliable stop, which is important, especially when you're in busy traffic or going downhill. The tires on this bike are Vittoria Terreno Dry 700X40C. They're designed to handle different surfaces, which I found useful when switching from pavement to dirt paths. They grip well enough for some off-road sections, but they still roll smoothly on the road. They also come with reflective strips, which make you more visible when riding at night or in low light. I think that's a nice safety feature, especially if you're riding in the evening. 
Comfort is one of the things I appreciate most about this bike. The riding position is more upright, which feels natural and gives you good visibility. You don't feel hunched over, so it's easier on your back and neck during longer rides. The saddle is also pretty comfortable, and the grips on the handlebars have a nice feel, which helps make the ride more pleasant, even on bumpy roads. One thing to note is that the bike doesn't come assembled, so you'll need a professional to put it together. That's something to keep in mind because if it's not assembled correctly, you could run into issues down the road. I also noticed that while it has good reflective details, it doesn't come with built-in lights. If you plan on riding at night, you'll need to buy lights separately. Another feature worth mentioning is the connectivity with the Cannondale app. The bike comes with a wheel sensor that tracks your rides, giving you useful data like speed, distance, and calories burned. I found this feature to be a nice bonus for someone who likes to keep track of their rides without needing a separate device. It's pretty simple to use once you set it up, and it adds a bit more to the overall experience, especially if you're someone who likes to see progress or map out routes. It's not a necessity, but it's a nice extra touch that enhances the ride in a low-key way. Overall, I think the Cannondale Quick CX-3 is a solid choice for someone who wants a bike that can handle city riding but also wants the option to go off-road sometimes. It's comfortable, handles well, and has features that make it a good all-rounder without being too specialized in any one area.